My name is Hayley Clements and I'm a researcher here at the Centre for Complex Systems in Transition at Stellenbosch University. And my research aims to quantify the biodiversity planetary boundary for Africa and is funded by a Jennifer Ward Oppenheimer research grant. I'm what is called an interdisciplinary conservation scientist. And the reason it's interdisciplinary is because I'm interested in the relationships between people, societies, economies, and our natural world. In order to conserve our natural world, we need to understand that people interact with this world on a daily basis. We depend on this uh, natural world for services such as clean air, clean water, food, etc. But through our actions and through societal development, we also impact on the natural world. And so my research seeks to understand these interactions between people and nature, such that we can move towards a more just and sustainable future for all. My research aims to address this knowledge gap, providing insight into where investing in nature can ultimately benefit the well-being of people across the African continent. When we make decisions as individuals, as organizations, as governments, and ultimately at the international level, we need the best possible information or data with which to make those decisions. And that data is not readily available to decision makers. And so this project proposes to come up with a practical way to measure the intactness of biodiversity at different scales that can then be available to decision makers. The ecosystems around us contribute to our well-being as societies by providing us with a range of services. So these services range from providing the food that we eat, the air that we breathe, wetlands, clean water. A diverse range of ecosystems sequester carbon that contributes to maintaining our climate within a stable uh, space for us. So these are all services that ecosystems provide to people. I also do research that tries to understand what makes conservation areas viable in Africa. And a really interesting example of that is the white rhinoceros. We all know that rhino are under increasing threat and pressure from growing poaching. But what many people don't know is that of the remaining white rhino population, about 18,000 individuals, 80% of those rhinos are in South Africa. And about half of those, and the number is growing, are actually on privately owned properties in South Africa. And so some of my research teamed up with the Private Rhino Owners Association, who did a national survey of private landowners that own rhino in South Africa. To date, there hasn't been research that's really tried to understand what the impacts of the growing poaching crisis are on these private landowners that own rhino. Now, why this is important is because poaching has gone up, which means the costs of conserving rhino on properties has also gone up. And private individuals, of course, many of them believe strongly in conserving rhinos, but they also need to have a viable livelihood. And so if the cost of conserving rhino becomes much more than the revenue that they can generate through, for example, ecotourism or trophy hunting, then there's concern that many of these landowners might sell those rhino. And also because the cost of conserving rhino has gone up, what that means is that the value of rhino as an asset has gone down. The next decade is critical for African decision makers and all of us on the continent to navigate development in a way that does not surpass a boundary of biodiversity loss beyond which human well-being, all of our well-being, is ultimately affected.